Hello and welcome to Mrs. Law's class. In this video, we're going to take a look at order of operations with rational numbers, both in decimal form and in fraction form. Now to start with, we're going to take a look at the acronym BEDMAS. So the B in BEDMAS stands for brackets. And that's the first thing that we're going to do. Now we're not looking at brackets that surround a single number, but brackets that actually surround an operation inside. Next we have E, which stands for exponents. So you want to evaluate the exponents, which means to calculate the value of any of the numbers with exponents on them. And then next we have D and M, and that stands for divide or multiply. And you're going to work on that in that order. So if there is a division first, before multiplication, then do the division first. However, if the multiplication symbol comes first, then do the multiplication before the division. And then finally, we have A and S, which stands for add or subtract. And similarly, to division and multiplication, we want to work in order from left to right, whichever comes first. So let's take a look at an example of an order of operation question with decimals. So we can see that we have three operations, division, subtraction, and multiplication. So what we're going to do is we're going to do the division first. These brackets that we see here in the first part here only surround a single number, so those brackets don't count. We don't have any exponents, and that's why we're doing the division first. So we have negative 3.6 divided by 1.2, and since we know that 12 goes into 36, we know that 1.2 also goes into 3.6, and that's going to be negative 3. We're going to bring down our minus sign and our 7, and then times 0 0.2. So now what we have is a minus sign and a times, and we're going to do the times first. So we can think of this as 7 times 0 0.2, or we can also think of this as negative 7 times 0 0.2. And that's going to be negative 1.4. And then finally, we only have one operation left. And it's negative 3 minus 1.4. And that's going to equal, I'm going to put equal signs through here. That's going to equal negative 4.4. So let's just review what we did. So we did the division first. And then we're going to multiply. Second. Now, actually, in this question, because the 7 times 0 0.2 doesn't affect any of the rest of the numbers, we could actually have done the 7 times the 0 0.2 right off the beginning as well. The so 7 times 0 0.2 would be 1.4. And then we can skip to this step, actually. But if you want to only do one operation at a time first, that is totally fine. And you can do what we just did. All right, and then the last thing we're going to do is to subtract. All right, let's take a look at another example. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is brackets, and we can see we have a 2.6 minus a 5.1, and these are um, opposite numbers. So you can think of this as 2.6 plus negative 5.1. So I'm going to do this on the side. Remember, we take the larger number, we subtract the smaller number, and we need to do a little bit of borrowing. So this gives us 2.5. Now we can see that there's more negatives than positives. So this first subtraction is going to be negative 2.5 plus. Now we can actually do the exponents at the same time. So because that doesn't affect it any uh, and in any way because there's no brackets around here. So 3 squared is 9, and that's going to be times 0 0.4. All right, so next we're going to do uh, the multiplication because that comes before we add. So we have the 9 times the 0 0.4. So we know that 9 times 4 is 36, but because of the decimal, we have a 3.6. Bring all the other numbers down. 
and we'll put some equal signs at the beginning. So notice that we keep working down. We don't have to write anything that we do except for this little subtraction that I did on the outside here. All right, and then finally, we're going to go negative 2.5 plus 3.6. And if you don't know that, we can also do this on the outside. So 3.6 minus 2.5 is 1.1. And we have more positive, so our answer is 1.1. So we did brackets first. And then we did the exponents. Or actually, there's only one exponent, so we did the exponent. And then we multiply. And then at the very end, we did the addition. So that's how we work through an order of operation question with decimal values. Next, we're going to take a look at order of operation questions with fractions. So with fractions, same thing. We're going to do everything with brackets first. And we can see that there's two numbers with a plus sign in the first bracket. And the second bracket just has a, number, a single number. So there's nothing really to do there. So this first one here, when we are adding fractions, we need to get a common denominator. So we're going to multiply this first fraction by 3 in the top and the bottom so that we get a common denominator of 15. So now we have negative 9 plus 7. And this is all now over 15. I'm going to keep the brackets and I'm going to rewrite everything else underneath. So we're going to add first by getting a common denominator. All right, so when we add, we get negative 9 plus 7. That's going to be negative 2 over 15. Now, at the same time, I know that I'm going to divide. So remember that when we divide, we're going to multiply. We're going to multiply by the reciprocal. So this will be negative 6 over 5. So I'm going to write divide by multiplying. by the reciprocal. Now, at this step, I would recommend that you look for factors to cancel out. Okay, So look for common factors to cancel. That way, that after you multiply, you don't have to do any reducing. Okay, So we can see that 3 goes both into 6 and 15, and 3 goes in 6 twice, and 15 5 times, and then that's it. So negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4, and then 5 times 5 is 25. So our last step was to multiply. All right, let's take a look at another one with some mixed numbers here. So again, we work with the fractions in the brackets first. So the 8 and 7 tenths, we're not going to deal anything with it, but we do have to write it and bring it down. So minus, okay. And to make it easier, let's actually maybe uh, change the mixed numbers to improper. So 5 times 2, so it's going to be 11 fifths. And then 4 times 2 plus 1 is going to be 9 fourths. And bring down the 2 thirds, okay. And so now we have 8 and 7 tenths. And a common denominator is 20. So we're going to multiply the first fraction by 4 and the second fraction by 5. So we have 44 minus 45 all over 20. And then times are 2 thirds. So notice that I keep bringing the 8 and 7 tenths down even though I'm not using it. Uh, 44 minus 45, I get negative 1 over 20, and that's going to be times 2 thirds. All right, so we finally finished the bracket part. Now we're going to multiply next because that's order of operations, and we can see that we can reduce. So 2 becomes 1, and 20 becomes 10. 2 goes into both, and we're going to get 8 and 7 tenths. 
minus negative 1 over 30. So we can see that the, we have two negative signs here. Let's change them to plus. And we have a common denominator that we can get. We're going to multiply by 3 in the first number. So we have 8 and 21 over 30 plus 1 over 30. So that's going to give us 8 and 22 over 30th. And we should reduce that. So we get 8 divided by 2, and we get 11 over 15. And that's how we use order of operations with fraction questions. I'm going to finish off by showing you a spot the error question. So here, a student's solution to a problem to the nearest hundredth is shown below. The solution is incorrect. Circle the errors and provide a correct solution. So here we see that there's a whole bunch of brackets, but the brackets surround only one number. So we go on to the exponents. So we want to check that negative 8.3 squared is actually 68.89. So I'm going to do that outside over here. And we're just going to do some quick multiplying. So 3 times 3 is 9. 3 times 8 is 24. 0. 8 times 3 is 24. Carry the 2. 8 times 8 plus 2 is 66. And then we're going to add. And we can see that we're going to count two decimal places, one, two, from the back. So this will be one, two. So the decimal place will go right here at 68.89. And when we look back at the question, we do indeed see a 68.89. So that's correct. All right. So this first line is OK. Everything was just brought down. We're going to go on to the uh, next line. And we can see that multiplication was done first. Now that's OK. We should probably do the division, but it's not wrong here to do the multiplication because that doesn't really affect the division. So we can see that it's negative 3 times negative 7.5. So this actually should be positive. So we know that a negative times a negative should be positive. But we're also going to just double check our multiplication. So we have 7.5 times 3, place the bigger, the number with more digits on the top, so we get 15, 3 times 7 plus 1 is 22. We have one decimal, so it's 22.5. So the number is correct, but the sign is incorrect, it should be minus. Now at the same time, the division should have been performed, but what happened, you can see here, is that negative 0 0.2 was then minusing 22.5, and that's how the 22.7 came about. However, we should be doing the division first. So division should be done before subtraction. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to correct this. Okay, so we have the 68.89 divided by the negative 0 0.2. So we're going to do a little bit of long division. So we're going to move this one place over to 2, and then move this one place over. So 2 goes into 6 three times. 2 goes into 8 four times. 2 goes into 8 another four times. And then 2 goes into 9. And because it's, it's, it's kind of the end, we're going to put 4 point. Five. So I didn't really do a proper long division, but we knew that 2 went into the numbers 6, 8, and 8 already. So what we have is, oh, and I put the decimal in the wrong spot. So the decimal is moved here, so that actually should be placed right there. Good mistake here. All right, so we have in this next line, it should be 344. 0.45 and then plus 22.5 so that when we add these together oh and this should be negative so when we add these together we should get negative 321.95 and that's how we spot the error and then we should also write down what the mistake was so that we can look back